So in section 3.1, we're going to talk about measures of center. So how to get a value that is right kind of in the middle of your data here. And so we're first going to look at the mean. And so we pronounce this uh, as the sample mean, which is pronounced as X bar. And sigma here uh, means to sum up. It's actually a Greek letter. Capital Greek letters are reserved for operators. So uh, X is the data values, and then N is the sample size that we have here. Okay. So it's telling us to add up all of your data values and then divide by how many we have. And we're probably familiar with this idea of the mean. This is just a more uh, formal definition here. We should also introduce mu at this point, which is a population mean, which is the same thing, but in, if we're talking about the entire population, we're going to use Greek letters, lowercase, to represent those uh, variables. Uh, regular letters we use for the sample. So, for example, if we wanted to find the mean of these values here, what the formula is telling us to do is just to add them all up and then we're going to divide by how many there are. So we're going to add all those up, and then we're going to end up dividing, and we're going to get 6.57. So that would be the mean. Now, if this was all the data we have, it would technically be a population mean. If it was a sample, then it would be a sample mean. But we're just adding up all the values and dividing by how many there are. And so the question is, is this value uh, in the center? So if we arrange these from smallest to largest, is 6.57 somewhere in the middle? And it is. It's pretty darn close to right in the center. So this would be a good measure of center. Let's try this again. So why don't you find the mean of these values here? And so let's go ahead and add these up. And if we do that, so if we add these values up here, we get 13.33, and the question is, again, is this uh, value uh, in the center here? Is this guy in the center? So let's put them kind of in ascending order, and where does 13.33 fall? And it falls kind of further to the right here, so this guy is actually not uh, in the center there. Uh, 42, you could see that it's a pretty high value compared to everything else. It's what we would call an outlier. So whenever we have an outlier, the mean is not going to be the best measure of uh, center. And so we're going to want to look at some other ways to calculate the measure of center. So another way we could do that is by the median. And the median is really the uh, 50th percentile. It's the value right smack in the middle of the ranked data. And so we have some different names for it, M or MED, your calculator we use, which is the um, second quartile. And if you recall from the formula, it's really the 50th percentile there. And so here's a formula we could use to get it. We're going to do this a little bit uh, more simplified here. Let's use the same data we looked at uh, to calculate the mean. So why don't we find the median of this last set of data? So 7, 6, 11, 8, 6, and 42. So we're going to want to arrange them in a ranked order. So let's go from smallest to largest here. And we're going to take the value right smack in the middle. Since there is no middle value, we're going to take the average of those two or the midpoint. So 7.5. And so the question is, is that value right in the middle? And it is. I mean, by definition, that's what we're doing for the median. So this gives you a better uh, measure of center. And even if there's an outlier, that median works uh, a lot better than the mean. Let's look at another one. Uh, this is called the mode. And this is going to be the data value with just the highest frequency, the one that occurs most often here. So if I wanted to find the mode of this data set here, uh, it would be 6, because 6 comes up more often than all of the rest. So the mode would be 6. Uh, the mode is really helpful if we have data that's not quantitative, but qualitative. So, for example, if we want to find the mode for some grades that were issued, the mode in this case would be B, because B occurs most often. 
what about if we wanted the mode for this data set here? So say we're, uh, we're recording colors that people liked. So find the mode. And we see that blue and red both occurred most often. So there's going to be two modes, which is blue and red. And so we would call this data set bimodal uh, in this case here. So these are three uh, different ways to try to calculate that measure of center to see where the bulk of the data is. So let's try this out for this example here. So here we have some exam scores uh, for 20 students. And so let's find the mean. And so we're going to add all of the values up. And then we're going to divide by how many there are. There's 20 exam scores, so we're going to divide by 20 here. And we're going to get 73 there. And we see that that is roughly about in the middle, about half below and about half above. So 73, that ends up being a pretty good measure of center there. But let's go ahead and try to calculate all of them. Why don't we go ahead and find the uh, median? And we're first going to have to rank the data lowest to highest, which it is. And we're just going to break the data up into two halves. And there's not a middle value this time, so we're going to have to take the average or the midpoint of those two middle values. So if we add them and divide by 2, we're going to get 72, which we could have probably seen uh, right away. But if we're plugging it into the formula, we would get that midpoint there. And let's finally calculate then the mode. So 72 occurs with the highest frequency in this case. And so these three would all be measures of center. We typically tend to favor the mean because there's an algorithm that could calculate it. But other times we do need to find other alternative methods to identify that, uh, that uh, measure of center. And if we plug it into a calculator, if you do a one var stats, uh, plugging it into a list, um, it would actually give you those values. There's your X bar, which is a 73 year mean. Um, remember your median right there's 72. That's the second quartile. Um, and the mode doesn't show up, but you could just look at your data to see which one occurs most often. Let's try to find uh, the mean here from an actual table. So here we have some uh, not raw data, but uh, data that's already been organized and cleaned up a bit. And so uh, the key thing is here we don't know a specific score uh, where exactly it falls into. So if we're looking at this uh, interval here from 74.5 to 80.5, I don't know what those two uh, uh, values are there. So those number of students that fell in there, right? I don't exactly know what is that, uh, that uh, value. They could have both been 75 or one and, uh, uh, a 76 and the other 77. We don't know. Once we organize our data, we kind of lose some of that information. So the best estimate for that is to use the midpoint. So we're going to want to just use the midpoint for these guys here. And so the midpoint, we're going to add those two values and divide by two. So we're going to add uh, the lower and upper um, uh, boundaries there. And we get 77.5. So we're going to estimate that those two values are uh, uh, scored here for uh, 77.5. And we're going to want to do this for each of those uh, intervals. And we're going to go ahead and get all the midpoints here. Okay. Now... This 77.5, it represents two values. So when I do a mean traditionally, I'm adding that number two times. So a fast way to do that is to multiply it by two. That means it's occurring two times there. And so we're going to use this for all of these values. Multiplication is a fast way of doing addition. So here I have one value of 53.25. Here I have none. And here I'm going to end up with four values of 65.5 and then four values of 71.5, etc., all the way down. So 
here we're using multiplication just as a quick way to do addition. If we actually get the mean uh, from a frequency table, here's the formula for it, which is the summation of F times M. So that's the frequency times the midpoint, so how many times it occurred. And uh, that's what we're doing here on the right. That pretty much is that F times M all the way through there. And we're going to want to add them up because that's what that sigma notation means. So we're adding all of those up. Now, there's another part to the formula here in the denominator where we're going to want to get the whole total. So we're going to get the total frequency. And so in this case, we have 19 different values. So we're just going to divide those two, and it's going to give us 76.86. In essence, this is still the same uh, formula that we had for calculating a mean, but we're estimating it with a table. This is technically mu because we're looking at uh, an exam here, statistics exam, and we're assuming we have everyone's score here. So technically, this would not be X bar. It would be uh, mu in this case. It's because we're talking about a population because we do have access to everyone's score here. We could do this in the calculator a little bit easier if we plug in list one and list two here. So the midpoint has to be list one. And the frequency has to be list 2. And if we go ahead and plug that in, I'll show on this next slide. A bit better here. There we go. So midpoints in list 1, frequencies in list 2. If we run a 1 var stats, but jointly, it's list 1 comma list 2. So using both of them together, uh, we'll be able to actually calculate uh, the mean here. So I'll go ahead and uh, uh, give that to us. Um, Good to know how to do it by hand, but just a uh, uh, kind of a shortcut here. A lot of times we're going to be more interested in the interpretation. So we're just going to want to get that calculator and then interpret, you know, what exactly it means.